Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It is time to finally sit down and record that introductory slash Q&A slash thank you video I have been talking about for the past month. In my defense, if you've been keeping up with my updates, you know that I've been annoyingly sick over the past couple of weeks, really bad cough, haven't been able to really sit through an entire recording session, but now we finally passed the health milestone where I'm not coughing 24-7 and I can actually devote hours to getting our videos done without too many issues. So now that we've managed to do that, it's time to just sit down, get to know each other a little bit better. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, answer some of your questions, and of course say a heartfelt and sincere thank you for all the love and support you guys have been showing me over the past couple of months. You guys have been absolutely amazing and we will be getting into that more soon enough. I'm going to try to cut my rambling down to a minimum, at least I hope I do. I'm a rambler at heart, it's what I do. And we're going to try to bypass that by jumping straight into the introduction. So now for the actual introduction. Hello everybody, my name is Cynthia and it's very nice to meet you. A lot of you have been able to guess my first name. I didn't make it that hard. When I was coming up with my username, I didn't want to use my actual first name. So I just looked for words that started with C-Y-N or S-Y-N. And after 10 minutes landed on synthetic, I was happy with the way it sounded. So I stuck with it and I go by that on all my social media accounts. Sometimes I add a couple of extra S's just in case synthetics already taken I'll actually need to start linking my other social medias more so I'll remind myself to do that but um you guys are completely free to continue calling me sin a lot of you already do so it's probably easiest and I also refer to myself as sin sometimes so sin is fine Cynthia is fine synthetics fine you can call me Thea if you'd like the only nickname I do not accept is Cindy and that is because it is my mother's name and it makes me uncomfortable um, I'm a new college grad. I graduated from college this past April. I have my master's degree in marketing and business management. I do not currently work in my field though. Right now I am a project manager in the telecom field, whereas I would like to be a product marketing manager in the tech field. And I know those titles kind of sound the same, but they are completely different different things require completely different skill sets and one of them actually uses my degree while the job that I've had since before I graduated college while I like it does not use my degree and it's not really what I'm passionate about so that's kind of what I do behind the scenes when I'm not recording is work and then figure out how I'm going to make that career switch into a completely different industry doing a completely different job. So I will let you guys know how that goes. I completely bypassed the fact that I am 24 years old. My birthday is September 20th, so I am a Virgo. I am five, five and a half for the person that was asking. I graduated from the University of Florida, so I am a Floridian. I do not live there currently. I did move for work and to be closer to family. And that is kind of basic stuff about me. We're going to get into a lot more when I get to your guys' questions, but now that you guys kind of have at least a name to a face, I feel like it would be more sincere now for me to actually take the time to pause and thank you guys for just how amazing you've been over the past couple of months to both me and this channel. I really don't tell you guys enough how amazing you are, but I am thankful for every last one of you, whether you have been here since the very beginning and you've seen every episode up until now, if you have, you're amazing because if you've been here since the beginning of our Mass Effect playthrough, you know we had some quality issues there in the beginning. So if you stuck through that, I love you. But even if you're not that person, if you've only seen a handful of videos, if you've only seen a couple of minutes of my playthroughs because maybe you were looking for a very specific reaction, if you like and comment and you interact with me, or you just hang out and you watch the video and you don't really interact but you're still there enjoying, I am so thankful for every last one of you. And without you guys, I really don't think I would have stuck with this hobby for as long as I have because the feedback from you guys has just been absolutely amazing and being able to watch this channel grow as organically as it has has just been mind-blowing and amazing in every way and it's largely up to you guys it's largely because of you guys because when you think about it in retrospect and look at the wider picture there are so many creators 
on YouTube. There are so many hours of content. There are so many viewers with not so many hours in their day. You guys have 24 hours in a day and that's filled with your lives, your families, your friends, your hobbies. So you guys get to be very picky with what content you consume and what you don't. So it is very fulfilling to know that people take time out of their day to sit down and watch your videos, whether they interact or not. Just knowing the people enjoy your content enough to sit down and take time out of their day to view it is just an amazing feeling that you guys have brought me. And it's added a completely another layer to why I want to do YouTube and why I want to continue this. Because when I went to start a YouTube channel, really my reasoning already linked back to you guys, even though we didn't know each other just yet. But um, I've always loved reactionary content. It's one of my most searched things on YouTube. Just following someone else, another human, along their mental and emotional journey as they're following a story, whether that story is a TV series, a movie, a video game. There is something in me that absolutely loves being able to see another person's raw emotions, being able to hear their thought process and what they think of what's going on in the story. So I've just always loved that relationship between a Let's Player or a person who makes reactionary content and the viewers, and since I was a viewer my entire life, I kind of wanted to see what the other side of the coin was like and make content that was purely for the entertainment of others where you guys could sit down, watch, relate to me, argue with me, understand what's going on in my head, feel the same emotions that I am, because there's just something amazing about sharing an emotional experience with someone over a story and not even really having to be in the same room with them. I think that's beautiful. So you guys have really been able to help me see what the other side of that exchange is like, and I am absolutely in love with it. And it's largely been because of how amazing you guys have been. I try my best to read every comment, and you guys have been the best with all the support and the tips and the fun facts. You guys have truly been the best, and you make me want to invest more time, money, and effort into this hobby. That way we can start rolling out more content, different kinds of content. We can really grow this community into something both of us can be proud of and both of us can enjoy. Because really that's what this is all about, is building something that we can enjoy on both of our ends, me as the creator and you guys as the viewer. And you guys have been so amazing that now I'm pretty sure that reaching that goal is something that is attainable. I hope that we can keep this going for the long term. I So I hope you guys will continue to stick with me through this very long ride. I will enjoy having you there. Just thank you guys for everything. You guys have sincerely been the best and you make me want to be a better content creator and push more games out and more reactionary content as quickly as I can. So thank you guys so much. You were the best. So we are going to now move on to the Q&A portion. Before it happens, I want to apologize if I butcher someone's name. If you have been following me in Mass Effect, I have pronounced Liara's name at least 10 different ways. You know, names are not always my strong suit. I will do my best. Just be patient with me. If you left me a really nice comment, I definitely read it and I'm going to... Um, reply to all of them when I go to upload this video. I just don't want to take up but so much time reading all the comments in the video itself, but I am, I've already read them and I'm going to reread them and respond to them outside of this video. So let us jump straight into the Q&A portion. A lot of questions about games, a lot of questions about me. Let's get to it. Okay, Ahab Kayed Definitely butchered that. I am so sorry. Have I played Dragon Age or Bioshock before? I played Dragon Age Inquisition, despite what a lot of people say. I personally loved it. I've never played Origins. I don't even really know what Origins is about. I just know it revolves around a warden named Hawk, and I have a kind of okay idea of who wardens are based off some of the lore I read from Inquisition. But um, 
don't really know the story that well, don't know the characters outside of Varric and Cullen and Morgan. So I would absolutely love to jump into the Dragon Age trilogy when we have more time for another open world series. And as for Bioshock, I watched my older brother play maybe 20 minutes of the second game, like right, was it the second game? I don't even re really remember what was going on. I would love to play it for myself. We actually have plans to play it. So we will be jumping into that once we have replaced or finished Mass Effect. We will be replacing it with Bioshock. Milos, do I watch anime? Absolutely I do. My favorite anime of all time is Naruto Shippuden. I've seen every canon episode, including most of the filler episodes. And before anyone asks, yes, I am watching Baruto. It's obviously not as good as the original, but I do like certain characters. I really like, I don't want to say parents, just in case some people are watching Naruto and they don't want to be ruined by who has kids in the next generation. Mitsuki, I think his name is. He's Baruto's other teammate. I think that's how his name is pronounced. That kid has my whole heart. I love him to death. So I am watching Baruto. I will be watching it up until the time skip. I don't like it as much, but I think it's good. Other animes that I really enjoy, I'm trying to catch up on Black Clover. I do really enjoy that. I'm kind of watching My Hero Academia, but I do not like Midoriya, so it's really hard for me to sit through this show. Yes, I'm reading the manga as well. I still don't like Midoriya, so it's really hard for me to read the manga. I'm waiting for Attack on Titan, the new season, to come out. I finished the manga. Love MAPPA as a studio. They did amazing things with Attack on Titan, and I really like Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm watching that, and I'm caught up in the manga. Waiting for the next season of Demon Slayer. I did not watch the movie, but I am caught up in the manga once again. Currently watching Life Lessons with Oramichi Onisan, which is a really good comedy anime if you don't know anything about it. It's very self-deprecating humor towards adults who may not always like their job or the people at their job. So if that's kind of your humor, definitely get into it and watch it. Really like Soul Eater. That's kind of one of my old favorites that I suggest to people if they're not really into anime and they want to get into it. I love Fire Force. The humor in it is the best. Death Parade is one of my all-time favorites for being as short as it is. It's a really great kind of monologue on the human psyche and who deserves to be saved and who isn't and whether or not we view ourselves as good people and what exactly that means. So I do like really deep shows. Really like Psychopaths along the same terms. Oh, I really like Future Diaries. That's like a classic to me who I, I suggested to other people. That is a quick rundown. Yes, I do watch a lot of anime. If you have a question about a specific anime, like one you want to know if I watch or if I have an opinion on it, drop it in the comments because I've definitely seen more than what I just said. Also, I really like Netflix's animes before we get off topic. Um, Castlevania, I don't really know if it counts as an anime, but I really enjoy it. And their anime Seven Seeds was surprisingly really good. So yes, anime, absolute must. If you have any further questions, ask me in the comments. Rick Friedman, do I know that I look like Allison Hannigan? I have a, I know who that is. I love her. Maybe at certain angles and certain facial expressions we look alike. I don't really see it, but I think she's cool, so I'll take it as a compliment. Tom M, have I played the Fallout series? I have played Fallout 4. I've played Fallout 4 multiple times. Have not played anything else. I would love to play New Vegas at some point. I've heard from many people that it's the best of the Fallout series. Correct me if I'm wrong. I heard the New Vegas might be getting remastered at some point. If it does, I would love to wait until the remastered version comes out. If not, we will definitely pick it up, like I said, when we have a slot to move one open world game out and we will drop another one in. Jeffrey Chen, what made you want to start a YouTube channel? I've always loved Let's Plays and reactionary content. I think there's something amazing, as I said, about being able to share in someone else's emotional and mental journey through a story. I think storytelling is beautiful. So being able to watch another human and their mind process what's going on, it's just amazing to me. It's something that I've always enjoyed. I've always taken part in being a viewer of reaction and Let's Play content on YouTube. So I really just wanted to see what the other side of that was like and be the one making content for other people to enjoy. So that's kind of the mindset behind starting a YouTube channel for me. Jake Fish Maui, what was the first game I remember playing and how did I get into gaming? 
got into gaming through my eldest brother. He had a Nintendo 64 and he was getting ready to move on to the PlayStation. So he left his Nintendo with me with two games. One of them was 007, I'm pretty sure it was Goldeneye. And the other was a Zelda game. I do not remember which one. Maybe if I explain it, someone else will recognize it. But um, my mother quickly took the 007 game from me because I was like two or three at the time. Playing this game is like one of my core memories. Um, she took the game away from me because I clearly remember there were like guns and blood in it and I was accidentally playing it in front of her. She took it from me so she left me with Zelda and I didn't know anything about consoles obviously because I was two or three years old so I did not understand that I had to restart the game. So I started off from my brother's save points so I had no idea what was going on. All I know is that I was inside a chicken coop. The only thing I know how to do was take the chicken, go up the ramp, float down with the chicken and I did not want to leave the coop because when I did it was like a dark gray misty area and there were either zombies or skeletons and they would kill me every time. So I just didn't leave the chicken coop. Don't know which version of Zelda this is, but those are the first two games that I played. I actually think 007 might have came first. Gusto CRM114, my favorite color is orange. Renegade Soda, what music do I listen to? I listen to pretty much everything as long as it sounds nice. My playlist is full of pop, rock, hip hop, rap, country. I have a bunch of classical music. One of my playlists, the one that I go back to the most, is a very relaxed indie style. A lot of independent artists, whether they're independent rock or independent rap or independent hip-hop, just that very relaxed sound. I don't really know how to describe it. I might end up linking my Spotify account or making a new spot account and just transferring my playlists over and someone who knows more about music can tell me what my style is, but I listen to a lot of indie music with a very relaxed tone. Alan Mortify, why did you decide to pick the games you have so far? Was it because they were trending, because you really like them, or something about them that makes them suitable for turning them into vids? Or what criteria do I look for for future vids? With Mass Effect in particular, Mass Effect was just great timing. Mass Effect was a series that I knew everyone and their mother loved, and I never got to personally experience for myself. So I knew that when the Legendary Edition came out, I was either going to play it for the channel or I was going to play it for myself, one or the two. And with starting YouTube, it was very beneficial to start with Mass Effect because Mass Effect has such a large community who have been in this fandom for so many years. I knew that when the Legendary Edition came out that there would be many of thousands of people on YouTube who loved the series that were looking for people whose first, it would be their first time jumping into this world. So it was a mixture of really wanted to play it and I knew that even if the video didn't do well as far as people's opinions, it would at least have a high click rate so my channel would be easier to find. So it was mostly me wanting to play this game, but also it was a strategy when it came to Mass Effect, and I'm so happy I did it. With God of War and Ghost of Tsushima, those were games that I know people loved, but because I was so busy with work in college, I never got to experience them for myself. So I kind of use you guys as a reason for me to sit in my room and just play video games and not feel guilty because in my head I've convinced it that I'm doing it for you guys, but in reality it's a lot of games that I never got to experience because I was busy, but I know the stories are absolutely amazing for what my friends have said. So I tried to grab games that I knew had some popularity and it really helped with God of War because I knew it was going to be a continuing series. So I could at least play the first one, then when Ragnarok came out I would be playing that one and people would hopefully be interested enough to go back to the original playthrough. So a lot of it is I look for games that I'm interested in but I also look for games that will at least get some clicks. Um, I'm at the point now where I don't really mind if they don't because I am kind of using you guys to play games whenever I want. I hope that's okay because you guys are using me for entertainment. It's a symbiotic relationship that we have. But as far as criteria goes, I've actually been thinking about this and I have different criteria now for streaming versus recording vids. 
with recording, I would like to record vids that are uh, from games that are sort of fast paced, pretty short, or at least give me a lot of personal choice. For instance, I've heard from my friend that there is um, Detroit Become Human, uh, the Telltale series, Until Dawn, games that are very heavily based off of your personal opinions and what you want to do. I would like to play those privately, that way no one can really influence my thoughts and opinions with their own, and probably games like Mass Effect as well if I know that um, personal choice is going to play a very large factor because one of the things that made Mass Effect awesome for me is that every decision I made was my own and I went into it blind. So I would like to continue that trend with games that give me a lot of personal choice. However, when it comes to streaming, if there is a game that I know has a lot of downtime, like um, Skyrim, for instance, came to top of mind, or Skyrim or Fallout 4, where you spend a lot of time just kind of exploring, collecting items, doing random things that don't really pertain to the main storyline or any storyline, really, because let's be honest, we spend a lot of time in Bethesda games just running off into the distance and doing nothing. So games that kind of mimic that or... I know have that option in my game style is to really run off and avoid the main quest line for as long as humanly possible. I would like to stream those because that would give us plenty of downtime to interact and then I can interact with you guys during the downtime and when it actually comes time to focus, kind of ignore you guys in chat. I love you, but I really want to pay attention to the story when the time comes. Pay attention to the story, then when we have more downtime, more interaction. So that's kind of what I wanted to do with that. And that also applies for um, From Software games because there are a lot of From Software games that we have to pick up. I've only played Bloodborne, but I was absolutely in love with it. And From Software, lots of dying and lots of grinding is guaranteed. So that leaves ample time for interaction. So that's kind of what I'm looking for as far as what I would stream versus what I would record. Avalon LT, what games are you playing in the future? So many, it's not even funny. We missed out on... Uh, we. I missed out on so many games. Um, would love to pick up The Witcher 3. Actually, let me know if I can play The Witcher 3 without having played the original 2. The only background I really have on The Witcher series comes from the Netflix show. And um, some TikTok fun facts that I find on The Witcher. Love to play The Witcher 3. Would love to play Elden Ring when it comes out. I would, we're gonna play God of War Ragnarok, absolutely. At some point, I would like to pick up The Last of Us 2. I played The Last of Us 1, didn't play The Last of Us 2 because I was just too busy with college and also when all the bad press came out. I don't listen to bad press, like it didn't affect my opinion of the game, but I just didn't want to throw $60 into a game when I wasn't sure if what was coming out the game was just people being nitpicky or if the game was actually bad. So I left it alone and now that the opinion has smoothed out, a lot of people are just kind of neutral about the game. It's very much a personal opinion type deal. So I would love to play it for myself and throw my own two cents in there. Andromeda, we definitely got to play that at some point. I've already said Ragnarok. I do believe we're absolutely going to play that. What else is there that you guys have been at? Red Dead Redemption 2. Have not played Red Dead 1 or Red Dead 2. I would love to play both. And considering Red Dead 2 is actually a prequel, I would like to play Red Dead 2 first, if that is possible, and then get into the first Red Dead. But we'll figure it out when we go to cross that bridge. Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West is an absolute must. I was in love with the first Horizon. Games you guys have not been asking me about, I would love to play Bloodlines Masquerade 2, or yeah, I think that's, or Mas the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. I need to play the first one, that's what I need to do, because a lot of people do like it. But the second one is an absolute must for me. I have a tad bit of a vampire obsession, and I heard the lore to Bloodlines was very, very intense or at least deep because it is based off a tabletop rpg from my understanding so i would like to play the first one we're definitely going to play the second one when it comes out i have a vampire obsession one of the first movies two of the first movies i ever remember watching in my life was interview with a vampire 
and Blade. So not two movies that are child appropriate. Cannot wait for that to come out. What else is there that is on the top of my list? Dying Light 2. When Dying Light 2 comes out, it's going to become a priority for me to play it. I have the best memories of playing Dying Light 1 with my best friend from high school. And the only other game I can think of off the top of my head, and there are many, many more, is Beyond Good and Evil 2. The first Beyond Good and Evil was a Ubisoft game that came out in 03, and it was amazing. It was actually the first sci-fi game that I can remember playing. I loved the story so, so much. It was equal parts government conspiracy theory and then also alien invasion and i thought it was so cool because you played as a human on a colony world i guess it was surrounded by all these different alien races and it was just an amazing experience and i love this game to this day i would absolutely love to replay it at some point because i do know that there is a sequel that has been teased many many times i think it's still in development I hope it hasn't been dropped. I haven't heard anything about it in a while. But as soon as that comes out, I'm going to be absolutely devoted to that game. Beyond Good and Evil remains one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm very much looking forward to the sequel. Horror games are coming out. I would love to play more horror on this channel. Horror is one of my favorite genres. I just finished. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is coming out with a series where you actually get to solve mysteries. So I'm very much looking forward to that because it is a game where you have to piece together clues and make your own assumptions. There is a game coming out called Chorus that I've been keeping my eye on. I don't know a whole lot about it just yet, but it is a space combat simulator. So hopefully that'll be something that is of interest to us. Saints Row is coming out with a new game. I love the Saints Row series. Not too sure about this upcoming release just because of what I've seen from the trailer. It gives me more Watch Dogs than it does Saints Row, but we'll play it anyway because I am looking forward to it. I do want to support the series. Don't think they've set a release date yet for the game Ghostwire that is coming out. I was very intrigued with the trailer when it dropped, so I'm very much looking forward to it because I do believe it's another Bethesda game. So definitely looking forward to Ghost Wires. There is a, another Gotham game coming out at some point. Gotham Knights, I do believe, and I do like the Gotham games. Harry Potter Legacy, because I played every other Harry Potter game up until this point. So it just seems right that I play Legacy. If you have any more like suggestions or games that you wanted me to address, throw them in the comments. If I haven't seen them before, I'll look up the trailer to them. Okay, gonna butcher this. Joe out Cotino? I definitely need glasses. So, um, will we play Andromeda? Absolutely, at some point. Andromeda, I might be interested in streaming because I do know there's a lot of running around, a lot of side quests. Just busy work is what I'm trying to say. So, probably going to end up streaming it. I would love to play it. I don't really care that other people don't like it. I just feel like it's necessary for me and our Mass Effect journey to play Andromeda to prepare for the next Mass Effect game. E-Forest, do you have any prior streaming or broadcasting experience, or did you just jump into this with both feet? Thank you for thinking I have prior experience, but I do not. When I went to start this channel, I bought the most basic recording equipment you could buy, and I tried to look up one video on how to get a YouTube channel off the ground, but I am someone I do not learn by being told things, I learn by doing. My learning style is very much trial and error. So we did just jump in both feet, figuring things out as we go. So yeah, no prior experience. Thank you for thinking I have some though. Table Knight, favorite Pokemon. My favorite Pokemon is hands down Psyduck. I love that little fellow with my entire heart. Thorsten P, where are you from? How old? How tall? Hobbies outside of gaming. From Florida, 24, five, five and a half. Hobbies outside of gaming. I used to do a lot of creative writing. 
I still try to, but I'm someone who can only write when they're in a very specific mood. So I write when I can. I used to paint a lot before I moved here. When I still lived in my apartment and I had a gym in my apartment, I really enjoyed weightlifting. I need to get a gym membership soon and get back into that. I also really love surfing, which is awesome now that I live on the coast and the waves, even though they're super cold, they're finally nice enough that I could actually go surfing if I wanted to. So at some point, I will be getting back into that. I don't think napping is a hobby. It should be, though. I love trying different coffee shops. I don't know if that's a hobby, but that's just something that I do. I love coffee shops. I love different coffees. I love different flavor coffees. My life runs on coffee. So yeah, coffee is my hobby. I love stories in absolutely every regard. So I watch a lot of TV, a lot of movies. I used to read a lot of books. I need, I've been in a reading slump. I need to get back into reading. Uh, Risa Lynch, favorite game of all time... It is somewhere between Beyond Good and Evil because I feel like that was the first time that I as a child experienced an intense storyline in a video game. And it was also the first story that ever made me cry. And it gave me my love for sci-fi games. So it's somewhere between Beyond Good and Evil and on the complete other end of the spectrum, Sly Cooper 3 Honor Among Thieves. I love the Sly Cooper series so much. I love the original um, PlayStation games, Spyro, Sly Cooper, Crash Bandicoot, but Sly gave me my love of stealth games, and I will forever be thankful for that. It also, Sly 3 sticks out as my favorite because it taught me that I love team building arcs, like like in heist movies where you have an entire montage where you go and you meet different people from different backgrounds, different personalities, different skill sets, and you force them to work together. That is one of my favorite dynamics in storytelling. And Sly Cooper is one of the first games that I can fully remember being a part of that process. Favorite games, Beyond Good and Evil and Honor Among Thieves. I couldn't really pick between them because they both represent two completely different things about what I love in storytelling. So yeah, those two games right there, love them to death, would love to replay them at some point. I don't know if Sly will ever come back, but I do know that Beyond Good and Evil will hopefully be returning, so I will have to play that at some point. Oh, and before I move on, somehow my brain left out Jack and Daxter. Not a lot of people count that amongst the PlayStation classics. I loved the Jack and Daxter series. It was actually one of the first games that I think I remember the characters cursing. And I was just mind blown because in the first Jack and Daxter game, Jack doesn't talk at all. And then in the second game, the first thing he says is like a curse word. And my mind was just blown. I love Jack and Daxter. Moving on, Jeff's effects. Favorite moment in Mass Effect series... I think it has to be priority to Chanka, particularly Morden's decision to sacrifice himself, because something about that moment was so sad and poetic and beautiful. Morden's journey throughout the games, uh, or at least the second and third game, was amazing to me. I say that Garrus is my favorite companion because I just feel attached to him because he's like our oldest friend in the Mass Effect series, but... Morden's story is my favorite, starting off learning that he was the one who helped redevelop the genophage so that it was more potent, and I think the writing kind of wanted you to see him as a villain for that, because a lot of the Paragon dialogue options were kind of ignorant, I guess is what I'm trying to get to, so it was kind of like the Paragon options wanted you to see Morden as a villain, but then as you got to know him more, you know that he felt very guilty about his part in redesigning the Genophage, and he saw it as a personal wrong on his end, and he did try to fix it by going to Omega and opening his clinic, and then when the opportunity presented itself for him to be the one to right that wrong, and he took it, I thought it was beautiful. I love Morden. He has my favorite story out of all of the Mass Effect companions. So priority to Chanka, Morden's sacrifice is my favorite moment in the series. Steven L, what are your thoughts on monetizing the channel going forward? I feel weird about monetization overall. 
I understand that it's a necessity, especially if I want to continue upgrading things and pushing out more content, because it would be great to get this all to a point where this hobby can kind of pay for itself. So I would like to look into doing YouTube memberships and definitely when we move on to Twitch, I know that subscriptions are a big part of the Twitch world. It makes me feel weird because no matter what, I'm going to give you guys content for free, but there are some things that we can throw in as benefits to make monetizing the channel in that way more understandable, like things that you guys would actually want from me. I know a lot of times when people go to do YouTube memberships in particular, they have a backlog of games that they give their members access to earlier than the rest of the general population. They do member only live streams. There's members only discords, uh, members only content as far as like life updates with the creator, if that's something that you want. So I would definitely consider moving the channel in that direction. Of course, you guys will always be getting content from me for free, but monetizing it more does make sense in the long run. So the only thing I could really ask from you guys is that if doing that is something that would interest you, what content or what options would you guys look for that would add value to you and make you actually want to become a YouTube member or subscribe on Twitch? Would you like members only live streams? Of course, we would continue to do live streams for the general population, but would you like those? Or um, you guys would get to be able to pick certain games. I might play games for members and subscribers that are different from the general population. And then the general population would just get those um, video recordings later. So we can definitely figure things out because it would make more sense to start doing that for the sake of longevity. Merch. Merch, I've thought about it. And as Steven brought up, there will absolutely be I can be bribed merch in one way or another. That is such a staple of unfortunately who I am and who our shepherd is and what we've bonded over. So my lack of a moral compass when it comes to video games will absolutely end up being merch in one way or another. I would love to do I can be bribed merch. Probably merch that revolves around the fish, if we're going to be honest, because my love of fish has definitely come full for force. Mostly my love of jellyfish, which is interesting because I was stung by a jellyfish when I was like four or five years old, and apparently it was such a traumatic experience. I don't remember it. I blacked out from the pain, apparently. But I've loved jellyfish ever since. I've just been obsessed with them. So we'll definitely do merch at some point or another, probably when we have more followers and more subscribers, then can I kind of validate in my head um, starting to push out merch and asking you guys for your input. So definitely in the coming months when there's a couple more of us, we will absolutely look to pushing out merch if you guys are really interested in doing that. Um, what are some of my favorite games I've played in the past? I love, as I said, the PlayStation classics. I've played all the Spyro games. I love the Sly Cooper games, as I said. I love the Jack and Daxter games. Beyond Good and Evil, as I mentioned, one of my favorite games of all time. Horizon Zero Dawn, The Last of Us, Dying Light, the Mass Effect series now that I can kind of claim that is one of my favorite games. It absolutely is. I love the Saints Row series. I love the first two. They were definitely a little bit more realistic, a little more gritty and dark. And I also love the other two that were very out of pocket and crazy and were just a good time to play. I wasn't one of those people that was very nitpicky about the switch up in the writing. So I do love the Saints Row series, which is why I'm going to support the release of it, the next one, even if I didn't feel that strongly about the trailer. Let's see. I like Mirror's Edge. I remember the old Spider-Man games. I need to play the new ones that have come out. But that pizza delivery mission was the bane of my existence. I really liked the Darkness games. I thought that they were really cool. The Darkness is one of my favorite comics of all time, that in The Witchblade. So being able to actually play as Jackie Estacado, I thought it was really cool. It was very gory, very dark, but I really liked the story of it. I wish that they would continue more into that realm with The Darkness and The Witchblade. Don't think they will because I haven't seen anything from either of those properties in a very long time, but they were very cool. Um... The first rated M game I ever played, I remember it, I would like to play it again, was called Primal. So yeah, those are some of my favorite games of all time. 
Michael Adrian, how do you know so much about different cultures and myths? I go through periods in my life where I become absolutely obsessed with one or two topics and I have to either learn as much about them as possible or practice them as much as possible. And then once that period's over, I never pick them back up, but I retain a lot of what I did. And my senior year of high school, I was taking a religions and mythology class. It was four months of just sitting down and learning about different mythologies and old religions across time, across the globe. And we would go over their creation myths, their apocalyptic myths. A lot of them had a tale of the Great Flood. I became obsessed, wanted to learn as much as possible. Let us see. Halcyon, water, fire, earth, or air, earth, 100% of the time. It made me think of Avatar The Last Airbender, actually. Trade Gamer, where are you from? Florida, any pets? Two-year-old cat, absolute menace. If I had gotten him before I played the Mass Effect series, his name would have been Grunt, but his name's Drogon after the dragon from the Game of Thrones. I have six siblings. I have three from my father's first marriage, two from my mom's first marriage, and then there's me. I have youngest child syndrome, my favorite child syndrome. Um, Commander Bentis. Why do I love sniper rifles so much? I gravitate towards stealth or being a very long way away from my enemy. Like, those are my comfort zones. I just love stealth and sniper rifles, even in full combat situations or about as close as I can get to that, just staying as far away from my enemy as possible. And I just like the skill behind sniper rifles, especially if there's a animation like in Mass Effect where the head explodes. That, that makes me kind of happy. It shouldn't, but it does. Anton Ironstag, I have not played Red Dead 1 or 2. Definitely would like to. Like I said, let me know if I can play Red Dead 2 before Red Dead 1. And also if I can play Witcher 3 without playing Witcher 1 and 2. Just let me know. Ryan Bell, favorite food, somewhere between pasta, steak, and sushi. Those are three completely different things, but it's somewhere in between there. Thimbly Joe, favorite game before starting the channel. Beyond Good and Evil or Sly Cooper 3, Honor Among Thieves. Das Smash. Is, was video games something that I was born into or did I discover it later in life? Considering I started at two or three years old, definitely something I was born into with my brother passing on his Nintendo to me. But yeah, and also video games were very encouraged, obviously, in my household. Whenever I would like do well at school or it would be my birthday, video games would always be the go-to. I was very much bribed with video games when I was younger. Wait a minute. I was bribed with video games as a child, so that is why I do not see bribery as a problem as an adult. That is my villain origin story right there, folks. I'm learning new things about myself because I never put two and two together. My parents bribed me as a kid, so that's why I could probably be bribed as an adult. Don't take that the wrong way and think I ever could be bribed, though. Unless it's a virtual setting. Or if it's something minor that I can't really get in trouble for and you have happen to have an iced venti white mocha from Starbucks. Just throwing that out there. Not something I can get in trouble for, but like a favor. Just putting that out there. Totally a joke, by the way. <laughs> Please don't take that seriously. Chavi Chof Chop. Did you how'd you come up with that? Did you find Mass Effect boring on your first try years ago, or you just couldn't stick to a routine of walking around a long game? Would you drop it now if it wasn't for the channel? All right, you also have ADHD, so you understand that, yeah, sticking to an actual schedule can be difficult. But when I have something tangible, like the channel or like a reward at the end, it's not that difficult for me personally. But as for why I dropped Mass Effect 2 when I was younger, I think it was absolutely because I didn't play Mass Effect 1. I jumped straight into Mass Effect 2. So it was absolutely more so because that I had no connection to the Mass Effect series. I didn't really care what was going on because I didn't have any knowledge from the first game. So I didn't care to learn anything. Like I said before, like way back when, it's odd that I actually remember Jack with all her tattoos more than I remember Miranda and Jacob, who are the two first characters you meet. So my mind just wasn't in it. I dropped it after the first two hours, never cared to pick it back up, but I wouldn't drop it now. I'm more than capable now as an adult of sitting through a crazy long game and just being hyper-focused on the game is kind of my problem. So I will just become hyper-focused and forget the rest of the world exists. 
Uh, Andre, what is behind that door? That door is now over there. That uh, door that I used to record in front of was just a junk room. It's just a little closet. It has boxes in it from when I moved in. And when I moved in, there were decorations here that I didn't really like. So I just shoved them all in that closet. Also, my skeletons are in there. Let's move on. Good old gamer highlights from your life. Um, definitely playing video games with my family. My um, more prominent memories are from playing with my older brothers. Starting this channel, honestly, because I started it on a whim with absolutely no plan. And I kind of just did it to do it with just graduating college. I've been a student my whole life. And now that title had suddenly changed and I was no longer a student. I was just an adult doing my job and that felt very odd to me so it's like i needed a new identity so streaming and recording videos was something i always wanted to try because i did want to try to be the person creating content for other people to react and relate to so i did take up this hobby to find a new identity and you guys have made this journey completely worthwhile so i would say that starting this channel has been a highlight of my life and i thank you guys so much for it Hibernape. How long does it take to render videos? On the old laptop, it used to take however long the video was to export, or not export, but like render the video. So if the video was two to three hours long, the rendering process would be exactly the length of the video. And then on top of that, we have to add in that to actually upload the video to YouTube. So that would be another two to three hours because YouTube uploads are always how long the video actually is. So a single two hour video would be four hours to upload it. And that doesn't count in YouTube's processing time. YouTube has been very odd to me when we first started when like all of my equipment was terrible, maybe because the video was lower quality. Processing time would take 15, 20 minutes tops. Now it can take anywhere between an hour and two hours. So that was a mess. But with this new computer, the new PC tower that we have, Actually rendering the video takes about 12 to 20 minutes on average, and that is for a two to three hour video, so that's amazing. YouTube processing is still however long the video is, but I can deal with that because taking that first two to three hours out of the equation was just amazing. So that's how long it takes overall. Darren Murphy, what are your likes and dislikes about games? Uh, to give you guys a better idea of what to suggest. I love stealth games. I love, love stealth games. Um, Dishonored, that's also a, one of my favorites. I love stealth games or any game that gives me the option of being stealthy. Like even in Skyrim, I was an archer and I would stay, I upgraded my stealth and my archery and I would stay as far away from my enemies as possible, but still just wreck them with a bow and arrow. Stealth decision games, any games that give me a lot of say in how the story plays out, or even games that might be a little bit more linear towards the end, it might not have a lot of different endings, but what's in the middle you get to decide. I'm, I'm also a fan of those games. I love open world games. I love exploring. Um, I love horror. Horror is one of my favorite genres, so definitely tell me what horror games you'd like to see me play. I have seen... All of Five Nights at Freddy's, I've seen Whistleblower from the Outlast series played, and I've seen the first 15 to 20 minutes of Outlast 1, but I did not see Outlast 2. I played The Evil Within for myself. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, let me know horror games, indie games, um, AAA horror games that you guys would like me to play. I would absolutely love to jump on that bandwagon. Games that are difficult definitely throw them my way. I have plans to play Cuphead at some point. I have been wanting to play it for the longest time. I love the art style of it. I love how difficult it apparently is, but I've never played it for myself. Would like to do that. Uh, Darren, again, have I considered doing reactionary videos? I wouldn't mind. I would actually really enjoy it. You guys just need to let me know what you would like me to react to. If it's like trailers or content that's on the internet or TV shows or bits and pieces of movies. Just let me know what you guys would like me to react to because at some point I would like to start doing reactionary content anyway because like I said, it's always been a love of mine to watch reactionary content so I, I wouldn't mind producing reactionary content. Geeprol? 
Witcher 3, would love to play it. As I've said, let me know if I can play The Witcher 3 without playing the other two. And what is your IQ? I have no idea. I was don't think I've ever tested my IQ, not in any official test, um, because I do know that normally if you're going to do an IQ test, you have to actually pay to have verified results. But if there are any free resources on the internet that you guys would be interested in seeing me do, we might be able to live stream it and I might make a video out of it. If you know any resources that can actually test this that are verified and free on the internet, let me know. And at some point we might actually take an IQ test if they don't take that long and I can record it, but I don't actually know. Tony Tharanil? I definitely butchered that, I'm so sorry. If you were trying to get one of your friends to play Mass Effect, how would you describe the trilogy to them? It is so immersive that it is insane. There are so many times in the series that I was so enveloped in the storytelling that I almost felt like... I had merged with Shepard in a way, like the way that we would react to things, the dialogue, just the way that the character handled certain situations, the friendships felt so real and tangible, and the threat level felt real. So it's just so immersive, it makes you feel like you're actually the main character, it is beautiful, and I would suggest everyone play it at some point in their life if they haven't. What made you decide to keep playing past the first game? I loved the first game. Like, I didn't play it when I was younger because it was easier for me to get my hands on the Mass Effect 2, so I started with that. But the first game was so much fun, being able to drive around the Mako and meet everybody and just build relationships and kind of watch your relationship grow with every character because, like, Rex did not trust us in the beginning. We were just some lowly, annoying human. And then he became, towards the end of Mass Effect 3, like Uncle Rex, like taking care of everybody, just a really good friend. We became super close with Garrison Tally. We got to see Ash's change, where she went from not really trusting alien races to just being more open and accepting. So... I loved the first game. I really enjoyed the story of the first game. So I would have continued on with the series whether or not I had recorded it. Also from the same person, how can we help you? Oh, that's so sweet. Um, honestly, just letting me know what you guys want from this channel, um, especially in the realm of monetization. If you're someone who would be interested in a YouTube membership or a Twitch subscription, just letting me know exactly what would make that exchange worthwhile to you, whether it's members only live streams, members only, not members only videos, but videos you guys would get to pick and see first, um, private discords, chats with me, just let me know exactly what you guys would value. That way I can plan to give it to you in the future. That would really help with us going forward and monetizing the channel more, just letting me know what type of content you guys would like to see to me, see to me, see from me. But yeah, that's really all I can ask from you guys is just letting me know exactly what you would want from this channel. That way I can adapt and give it to you and it feels like an equal exchange because right now it does, at least for me, because I'm getting enjoyment out of it. I'm being able to play these games and being able to build a relationship with this community and you guys. You guys get to know me a little bit more if that matters to you, but mostly you're getting the entertainment value. So that feels equal. So when we actually go to monetize things more and membership and Twitch subscriptions get involved, I still want that to feel like an equal exchange. So just, like I said, let me know exactly what you guys want so I can plan and give it to you. And that is the end of our Q&A. Thank you guys so much for all the questions and sitting through this Q&A. If you have any further questions for me, drop them down in the comments below. I will be responding to you there. If you left me a really nice comment and I didn't mention it in this video, it's because it wasn't a question and I will be responding to you on the original post. You guys left some really sweet just statements and comments and I would love to reply to those individually. But thank you guys so so much for all the love support and patience you guys have been absolutely amazing and i just can't wait to make more content for you guys interact with you guys more and really start building this community up more you guys have been the absolute best and i'm very excited for what the future holds for all of us so thank you guys hope you enjoyed the video hope you join me again and i will be seeing you very soon bye